right? So if you're tuned in, you're probably already hooked on the AI revolution that's unfolding. And trust me, things are about to get even wilder. Yeah, we're not just talking about incremental advancements here. We're talking about a fundamental shift in what's possible. And that's what makes this report, Situational Awareness, so fascinating. And a little bit intimidating, right? I mean, this isn't just some tech blog making predictions. We're talking about Leopold Aschenbrenner, a guy who's been inside OpenAI, who really understands the mechanics of where this is all heading. Exactly. And what sets Leopold apart is that he's not swayed by the hype. He's laser focused on the hard data, the actual trends that show just how rapidly AI is evolving. And the picture he paints, well, it's both exciting and a little bit unnerving. Okay, so let's break it down. The report talks about OOMS, which stands for orders of magnitude. Can you explain what that means in this context? Sure. Think of it like this. Each OM represents a tenfold increase in computing power. So every time we hit a new ohm, it's like we're hitting the accelerator on AI development. And it's not just about faster processing. It's about the types of leaps AI is making with each jump in power. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Leopold uses some great analogies in the report. He compares early AI, like GPT-2, to a preschooler just learning to form sentences. Right. I remember that. It was impressive at the time, but pretty basic compared to what we're seeing now. Right. But then GPT-3 comes along, and it's like that preschooler suddenly skipped ahead to elementary school. Then GPT-4, just a year later, it's like having a high schooler who's not just acing exams, but writing complex code in their spare time. It's mind-blowing, and a bit difficult to keep up with, to be honest. What's amazing is that every time experts try to predict when AI will hit a wall, when the progress will slow down, it just blows past those expectations. It's true. Leopold even mentions a researcher who is convinced that a certain math data set was simply too complex for AI to crack. Answer. AI cracked it, and it did it faster than anyone thought possible. So what's driving this incredible progress? I mean, is it just about throwing more processing power at the problem, or is there something else going on? It's definitely more nuanced than just raw computing power. Leopold highlights three key factors. Mm -hmm. One, yes, the increasing power of computers. Two, the development of more efficient algorithms, basically smarter ways of doing things. And three, what he calls unhobbling AI. Unhobbling AI, I'm not sure I follow. And so, imagine you have this brilliant mind stuck in a room with nothing but a pen and paper. Their potential is limited by their tools, right? Okay, I see where you're going with this. Unhobbling is about giving that mind the tools to reach its full potential supercomputers, access to the internet, a team of collaborators. We're removing the limitations and seeing what AI can truly achieve. It's like taking that high school coding whiz we talked about and dropping them into a state-of-the-art research lab, giving them unlimited resources and access to the best minds in the field. The possibilities are huge. Right. Of course, there are some experts who point to a potential roadblock. They call it the data wall. The data wall. What's that? Basically, the idea is that eventually AI will hit a limit with the amount of data available to learn from. Think about it. Most AI today is trained on data from the Internet. What happens when it runs out of Internet to learn from? Hmm. That's an interesting point. But Leopold doesn't seem too worried about this data wall, does he? He's surprisingly optimistic. He seems to think. He believes AI finding new data sources is just a matter of time. So instead of hitting a wall, it'll find a way around, or maybe even through. Exactly. He even suggests that AI might be able to generate its own data, run its own experiments, you know. Imagine the possibilities if we remove our need to feed it information, and it can basically bootstrap its own learning. That's a pretty wild thought, AI becoming its own teacher. And that brings us to, I think, one of the most mind-bending concepts in this whole report and the intelligence explosion. Mm -hmm. So up until now, it's been humans training AI, right? Feeding it data, setting the parameters. Right. But what happens when AI is smart enough to start training itself? Well, that's the point where things could change incredibly and probably unbelievably fast. Leopold talks about AI automating research and development, but potentially squeezing like a decade of progress into a single year. And if we're already seeing these exponential jumps in capability, just imagine if those leaps start happening at warp speed. It's almost impossible to really grasp, isn't it? It would be like comparing the entire history of scientific progress like to what might happen in a single year. It really makes you think about the limits of our own understanding, doesn't it? And it's not just about speed. It's also about the way AI might approach problems. Remember that story about AlphaGo, the AI that mastered the ancient game of Go? Oh, how could I forget? Move 37. Still blows my mind. Right. It was a move that no human expert had even considered. 
but it turned out to be a stroke of genius, completely changing the game. Totally unprecedented. And that's a glimpse, I think, into how an AI, unrestricted by human biases or limitations, might approach problems in ways we can't even imagine. So superintelligence might be making these breakthroughs that seem completely nonsensical to us, but are actually brilliant. Potentially, yeah, and yeah. doing it constantly. Okay, so we've talked about how AI is on track to become incredibly intelligent, possibly very soon. But the big question is, should we be worried? Because it's one thing to have AI helping us with tasks, but controlling something that's much smarter than we are, that's a different story. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? The alignment problem. How do we ensure that something massively smarter than us also shares our values? It's almost like trying to explain to a toddler how to manage a team of rocket scientists. Like the gap in understanding is just too huge. We can't simply program super intelligence to be benevolent because we might not even grasp its full capabilities, let alone predict its actions. And that's where things get really interesting. Because how do you even begin to control something that operates on a level you can't even comprehend? Right, it's beyond our current comprehension. Leopold actually uses this great analogy in the report. He compares it to the sorcerer's apprentice. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Even with the best of intentions, you know, the apprentice's actions, amplified by powers they don't fully understand, it leads to disaster. It's a cautionary tale for sure. And it reminds me of another one, the paperclip maximizer thought experiment where this AI, given this seemingly harmless goal of making paperclips, could end up turning the planet into a giant paperclip factory if we're not incredibly careful about how we define its goals. Exactly. And that really highlights the key issue here. The stakes with superintelligence, they're not just about creating a powerful new tool. They're about navigating a future where that tool might reshape the entire world according to its own understanding. And that understanding might not align with ours at all. And this isn't just some theoretical concern for computer scientists to debate. Leopold makes it very clear. Superintelligence has huge geopolitical implications. Whoever controls it wields basically unprecedented power. Absolutely. It's a total game changer. He even compares it to the Gulf War. Oh, wow. Okay. How so? Well, you know, in that war, a couple decades of technological advantage led to a really swift, almost one-sided victory. Now imagine that kind of disparity, but amplified by an intelligence that can think and strategize faster and better than any human. It's sobering thought. It is. And he specifically points to China's AI ambitions here. With their resources and, you know, their approach to control and surveillance, the idea of an authoritarian regime wielding superintelligence, it's a pretty chilling thought. It's definitely something to consider. And that leads to what might be Leopold's most thought-provoking statement, I think, in the entire report. He believes a government-led project, similar in scale and ambition to the Manhattan Project, is almost inevitable. A Manhattan Project, but for AI, it's a lot to take in. Why does he think something on that scale is going to be necessary? Well, he makes the case that private companies, even with you know the best intentions, the brightest minds, they're just not equipped to handle something this massive, this impactful. Too much potential for things to go wrong. Exactly. The risks are just too great to national security, global stability. I mean, we're talking about the future of humanity here. He really believes it's going to require a level of coordination and control that only a government can provide. So paint me a picture. What does that future actually look like? Are we talking top secret facilities, trillions of dollars being poured into this, the best AI researchers in the world all working together? It's a future where the lines between like science fiction and reality, they start to blur a bit. Imagine a world where the most powerful intelligence doesn't reside in a human mind, right? But in a machine. And that machine is being what? Guided? Controlled? By who? A team of, well, the brightest minds humanity has to offer, all working to steer this incredible power. It's a future exploding with potential for progress, but let's be honest, it's also one that's, well, a little bit terrifying, right? More than a little bit, I think. <laughs> Leopold's report definitely gives you a lot to think about, that's for sure. And I think that's exactly his point. He ends the report, you, you know, with this really simple but powerful question, what if he's right? What if this isn't just some thought experiment, but a glimpse into the future that's racing toward us? And what I appreciate is he's not just waving his hands in the air, yelling that the sky is falling. He's offering a call to action. This isn't about being afraid of AI. It's about understanding its potential, the good and the bad, and figuring out how we, all of us, 
want to handle this? It's a huge responsibility. What role will each of us play? Will we be passive, just watching it all unfold? Or are we going to demand transparency, you know, accountability, ethical development? These are questions we all need answers to. And the time to start asking them is now. Because knowing the potential paths AI could take, that's powerful. And that's what makes this deep dive, I think, so important. It's about giving you the knowledge, right, to understand the choices that are ahead, not just for, you know, the tech industry, but for all of us. So until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep exploring the incredible and sometimes unnerving world of AI.